Think about all the good things that have happened in your life, especially the most important ones. My guess is they were all done by you. Whenever you took matters into your own hands, you did great things. Whenever we become lazy, the exact opposite happens. As the old folks used to say, if you want something done right, do it yourself. No matter if it's raising a child, buying a house, or doing an important task at work, when it really matters a great deal, you won't just leave it up to someone else and hope for the best. Then why would you do any differently when it comes to probably the most important thing in life, your health? If I hadn't taken matters into my own hands, I would have probably been stuck in a bed having my 16 and my 12 year old kids taking care of me instead of me taking care of them. Ignorance is the worst disease. It kills and cripples thousands of people daily. Investigate for yourself, believe, but doubt. Of course your physician means well, but he or she doesn't have the same skin in the game that you do. Nobody does. Follow his or her advice, but explore other options too. Most of the times, the recommendations will treat your symptoms, but not the root cause. Anti-inflammatory medication doesn't treat the cause of inflammation. Painkillers don't treat the cause of the pain. Insulin doesn't treat the cause of diabetes. And statins don't treat the cause of cholesterol buildup in the arteries. All of these pills may have devastating side effects if taken over long periods of time, killing your own natural ability to treat the root cause. But there is something that can truly help your inner doctor. For me, it changed my life. I went from bedridden to traveling all over the world and enjoying every bit of my life while taking good care of my children and doing things that even healthy people can't even do, like surviving 57 days alone in the wilderness with little more than a knife. I manage my MS using a very specific combination of nature-provided nutrients, minerals, and most importantly, three simple tinctures that I take every day. These are the ones that worked for me, but I hope today I'll show you something that will work for you. That's why right now I want to invite you inside my world of remedies. I want to share with you everything I've discovered about medicinal plants and guide you along the path to healing yourself naturally. Because as pills weaken or even fight the only one that can heal you, your inner doctor, some natural substances found in nature, even some of your backyard plants are making them stronger. Our ancestors used these plants long before we existed, but they lack something that we know today. With the help of modern science, we can now distinguish the plants with powerful healing properties from the bogus folk remedies. We can now pinpoint the substances in nature that act like an antibiotic, an antiviral, or the ones that are helping your inner doctor. That's because we now know the mechanics behind a disease. Our great grandparents didn't even know that the root cause of an infection were tiny little creatures we now call bacteria or viruses. I was so inspired by my recovery that it became my life's mission to help others achieve their own. I edited all my manuscripts with all the plant knowledge I have gathered over the last 20 years. I sorted out only the most important and powerful medicinal plants, tinctures that really work, strong decoctions, infusions, salves, extracts, syrups, poultices, and place them in one book so that you can take advantage of them. It's called The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, The Healing Power of Plant Medicine. And here's just a glimpse of what you'll find in it. With hundreds of healing plants, I knew I had to find a way for people to quickly pinpoint the one they need. So first, I included a table of contents with the plants so that you can find out what medicines you're growing around your house without even realizing it. I included lots of color pictures and indications so you can easily find them. So when you open your new book, you'll find not only an index with the medicinal plants, but also an index with diseases and afflictions so you can search by your specific needs. I also included color photographs and indications so you can easily identify plants in case you run into them. There is also an easy to follow alphabetized appendix so you can easily find a plant or illness. For example, this is one of the plants you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. I'm pretty sure it looks familiar because it grows in most American backyards and most people weed it out. But what they don't know is that this plant contains a powerful milky substance called lacticarium. While this substance doesn't contain any opiates, it has similar effects acting directly on the central nervous system to lessen the feeling of pain. Inside the book, you'll find full instructions on how to turn it into a pain-killing extract that you can use daily or whenever you're in need. I'll also show you the common U.S. driveway weed that has become the most expensive and sought-out plant in Venezuela after the pharmacies ran dry. You'll also find two plants that I've used many times, and from now on, I hope you'll take advantage of their healing power. 
On day 42 of The Alone Show, I accidentally cut my knuckle while gutting a fish. The wound was very deep and most likely would have gotten infected. Luckily, I found yarrow, which, besides its antibiotic properties, quickly stops bleeding by contracting blood vessels. And I also found usnea, which is a powerful antibiotic you've probably seen growing on tree trunks. I dressed my wound for three days with these, and it healed so well that now you can barely see the scar anymore. On page 49, you'll find out the strange thing that happens when you pour salt into a cabbage. The end remedy offers some of the best protection possible for your digestive tract, regulating bowel movement and preventing both diarrhea and constipation. Of course, in the book, you'll also discover the three herbal tinctures I use to manage my MS. Because MS is an autoimmune disease, you should know that all three tinctures are effective remedies that can be used for other autoimmune disorders. One of the tinctures I'm taking daily is an adaptogen. That means it decreases the biological and oxidative stress of the diseases, fighting chronic inflammation and repairing damaged tissue. Unlike Humira, methotrexate, or other medication that suppress your inner doctor, the other two tinctures have an immunomodulatory effect. That means they bring it back to balance. If your immune system is hyperactive, they downregulate it, but only until the inflammation subsides. One works by balancing the nerve growth factor, which, besides nourishing connections between neurons, has a pro or anti-inflammatory effect, depending on the case. So, while usually the nerve growth factor keeps the immune system on high alert, when the inner doctor is already activated, causing inflammation or tissue damage, the nerve growth factor sends a signal to calm it back down. According to a 2017 medical study published in the International Journey of Molecular Sciences, nerve growth factor activates pathways necessary to dampen the inflammatory response and limit tissue damage. That's probably why nerve growth factor has been discovered in the cerebrospinal fluid of multiple sclerosis patients, in the synovial fluids of people with rheumatoid arthritis, in the sera of patients with lupus, and so on. It shows the body's effort to avoid excessive inflammation in that area. I could go on and on about the biology behind it, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. What matters is that they helped me and many of my patients get our lives back. And if an autoimmune disease is robbing you or a loved one of health and joy, then you have absolutely nothing to lose by trying these three tinctures. As you can probably imagine, the nerve growth factor also plays a tremendous role in helping people with neurodegenerative disease, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. These three remedies will not cure these diseases. So far, nothing can. And anyone claiming otherwise is just giving desperate people false hope. But by strengthening the connections between neurons, they may add more good years for those of us afflicted by these terrible conditions. Money may not grow on trees, but many of the remedies you pay money for do. This one is a fast-acting treatment for irregular heartbeats with the added benefit of lowering bad cholesterol levels. You'll also discover a tree called slippery elm. The inner bark of this tree contains a substance called mucilage. When taken orally, mucilage becomes slick and coats the mucous membranes in the intestinal tract, soothing inflammation, relieving pain, and giving your bowels a much-needed rest to heal themselves. If you have any digestive issues like Crohn's disease, ulcers, gastritis, heartburn, colitis, or gastroenteritis, then you absolutely need to try it. One of the most powerful Native American ointments was made from what they called the Tree of Peace. The Haudenosaunee ointment that we almost lost to history relieves back, knee, neck, shoulder, ankle, and wrist pain caused by any form of arthritis. The active compound in this ointment was found to be pycnogenol, which inhibits the inflammatory chemical signals in our body and provides mobility to your joints. A review of three randomized, double-blind, and placebo-controlled medical studies of middle-aged patients suffering from osteoarthritis found that it reduced the pain by roughly 42%, stiffness by around 43%, and physical performance improved by an average of 44%. You'll also find out about the plant that boosts your energy and relieves foot pain when you wear it inside your shoes. Another plant you'll find in the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies is Bone Set, which can easily be turned into one of the most powerful antipyretics. This means that it drastically reduces a fever. In fact, the name Bone Set was derived from the plant's use in the treatment of breakbone fever. As we age, men get an inflamed prostate while women develop what's called an overactive bladder. The name is different, but the result is the same. It starts with more and more frequent bathroom trips, some at 3 a.m. that will cost you a good night's sleep and leave you feeling dizzy the next day. Luckily, there is a very effective remedy for both. All you need are two extremely powerful plants found all over America. One will flush out and prevent any urine buildup, 
while the other will take care of the underlying inflammation which affects the muscles. But I must warn you, there is a side effect. Some people following this treatment experience a tremendous surge in their sex drive. On page 176, you'll find a gorgeous plant that regulates thyroid hormones, helping people with hypothyroidism increase their energy levels and lose weight. You will also find a plant that has a high concentration of chromium. Several studies have now demonstrated that chromium controls the metabolic action of insulin. One of them showed that 10 months of treatment with chromium in 833 patients with type 2 diabetes significantly reduced their fasting glucose levels beginning with the first month. Chromium is extremely rare nowadays because of the food processing methods that remove most of the naturally occurring chromium from foods. Maybe this is one of the reasons why type 2 diabetes is so common today, but 100 years ago it was a rarely occurring disease. While our grandparents consumed almost every part of this plant, today it has become invisible to most Americans. On page 54, you'll discover the plant commonly used as chicken feed that shrinks and heals varicose veins over time. Allergies are not to be taken lightly. It's a warning sign that your immune system is not acting the way it should. On page 146, you'll find a plant called Butterbur. This plant is so special because it contains antihistamines. So you would reasonably assume that it also has the same effect as antihistamines found in allergy medication, right? Wrong. When Butterbur was compared in a randomized control trial with Certerazine, the active ingredient in Zyrtec, although the results were the same, Butterbur didn't produce the sedative side effects associated with Certerazine. Same results, no money, fewer side effects. Basically, you're paying for the side effects. If you ever have to go out foraging, will you know which of these plants is edible and which one is a remedy for high blood pressure and tension and which one is poisonous? The Native Americans knew well and probably our grandparents did too, but very few people nowadays could give you the correct answer. As a survivalist, I can tell you that this kind of skill set will set you apart from your group during dark times and will probably even turn you into their guide or even their savior. I am sure that you've seen this plant too. It grows in most forest glades. You'll discover how to use it effectively to treat not only common colds, but lung infections as well. Also, breathing in the steam from leaves that has been boiled in water will immediately calm any asthma attack. This is probably why 100 years ago, people with asthma didn't die from it. On page 173, you'll also discover a plant called Pipsisawa, which in Cree means to break up into small pieces. That's because of its ability to break up and dissolve painful kidney stones. The plant also contains a substance called hydroquinone, which disinfects the urinary system and heals inflammation of the bladder. If you ever walk through the edges of woodland and get some sticky burrs attached to your clothing, then you can bet you've just passed by this plant. The best way to deal with this annoying weed? Eat it. <laughs> Native Americans used it as a sweetener 200 years ago.